Hello guys, in this section we are going to discuss about movement in animals having outer skeleton. You remember exoskeleton, the animals which have the skeleton outside the body. So let's see what is present in their body which helps them in movement. We first talk about movement in snail. Snail has a slimy body consisting of shell, head and foot. Okay, slimy means it has mucus all over, sticky substance. It has a shell, this is a shell, head and it has a long muscular foot present at the bottom. The shell is important because it protects us from any kind of predator. Predator is basically something which eats the snail and heat of the sun. The head of the snail consists of a pair of an antenna. You can see these two antennas here. So this antennas are basically helping the uh, snail sense if any uh, eating thing is present. Prey means generally what is eaten by other animal, by the animal itself. So like we smell pav bhaji, we like to go, we go run and eat it. In the same way, they have, they don't have no nose. So they have to sense something. So who, what will help the snail sensing it? It will be this antenna-like structure which are present in the head. Now what is the remaining part of the snail? Yes, it is foot. And this foot of the snail is very large and muscular and it has strong muscles. If muscle comes into picture, yes, it will help in movement. So it is a contraction of this muscular foot which helps or the muscles present in the muscular foot which helps the snail move. So snails move by alternate contraction and relaxation of the muscles present in this fit. The contraction and relaxation generates a wave-like movement. Okay, a wave. You might have seen a wave, right? So this wave-like movement uh, is because of the contraction and relaxation of the muscles present in the foot. Okay, and hence uh, the movement is said to be creeping in snail. In addition to this, whenever this wave-like movement is present, you can see the snail is moving very slowly and it is moving against the ground. So when it is moving against the ground, there are chances that the friction may develop when it moves against the ground. So to avoid this friction, uh, the snail also secretes a sticky substance which is said to be mucus. Slimy, you can say sticky substance which is said to be mucus which helps the snail move very smoothly against the ground right if you apply fevicol if you apply some gum some jelly then you will able to walk very smoothly right in the same way there is a sticky substance released by snail itself which helps the snail move against the ground without any friction and the movement of snail is creeping because it generates a wave like motion and why this wave like motion is generated because the muscle present in the Fit or in the foot of the snail contracts and relax alternatively. Okay, moving to our next very important organism, cockroach. We all have seen cockroach very nicely. It can fly, it can climb, it can walk. Why? Since it is able to fly, it has wings. Since it is able to walk, it has legs. Right? Climbing and walking can be done by legs so it is said that cockroaches have a hard outer skeleton which protects them in addition to this it has three pairs of legs okay very important point though we know that uh, we have we have uh, or cockroaches have legs but we don't know the numbers so it is said that three pairs basically six legs cockroaches have and it is a and pair of wings uh, two pairs so four wings are present attached to their chest which help them in movement. The muscles attached to the legs and wings again contract and relax which help the cockroach move. It is said that, suppose this is a cockroach, right? It is said that these are the one pair, second pair and third pair of legs. So whenever a cockroach moves, three legs are used at a time. So it is alternate. If the first one you are using this pair, the second one, second pair you will use this side. And the third pair again will be this side. So when it moves by one step, it will use one alternate side of the pair of legs. Okay. So if 
if while moving one step it is using the right side of the first pair it will use the left side of the second pair and again the right side of the third pair that is alternate uh, pair of legs is used for movement okay so cockroach is very simple it has legs and wings to move and fly and legs are used alternatively in addition to this you have to remember the number six legs and two wings or two pairs of wings that is four wings then the last we talk about movement in earthworm very important earthworms do not have an outer skeleton do not have a hard skeleton neither they have an inner skeleton they have something which is known as liquid skeleton okay do remember this point earthworm has liquid skeleton why because earthworms do not have legs <coughs> earthworms do not have limbs instead inside their body they have a liquid which helps in movement and hence it is said that uh, it has a liquid skeleton earthworm is a long cylindrical body with no bones it does not have bones also it does not have bones hence it has a type of skeleton that is liquid skeleton the body is divided into many segments in each segment has a hair like structures called bristles okay you first remember about the shape cylindrical structure body divided into many segments and each segment has a hair like structures this hair like structures are said to be bristles okay beside bristles it has a strong muscles called circular muscles that are present near the skin and longitudinal muscles which are present inside so if i draw another structure for muscle you can see it has a long muscle inside longitudinal means long okay inside the body it has a type of a muscle which is said to be longitudinal muscle okay and near to the skin okay now here it will look like same only but on the top of the skin it has something which is said to be circular muscle okay along its segments you can see so earthworms have two types of muscles in addition to bristles and a strong um, muscles it has two types of uh, muscles that is longitudinal muscle and circular muscle this contraction of longitudinal and circular muscles will help the earthworm move and the bristles which are present keep the earthworm to the ground it has to hold to the ground it has to keep a hold of the ground then only it will be able to move so the grip of the ground is maintained by the bristles present in earthworm now how does the earthworm move it is said that the earthworm performs the following steps while moving first the circular muscles contract now in the above diagram or in the diagram in the last slide i said that all over the body it has circular muscles so all this circular muscles will not contract at the same time it is said that initially the front part of the circular muscles contract where the remaining part are same so only in the front part the circular muscles of the earthworm contract because of which the earthworm's body becomes long and thin at the front at the back it is same but at the front it becomes long and thin which helps to move it little ahead right if i have a finger right if my front part of my finger or the circular muscles on the front part of my finger contracts what will happen the my finger will extend a bit because it has now become long and thin because of the contraction of the circular muscles then once the circular muscles contract what happens the bristles present in the front part takes a very good grip of the ground so that the front part cannot move now okay so first thing which happens is the circular muscles at the front part contract because of which the earthworm become long and thin and hence it moves a bit ahead right next thing bristles take a grip of the ground so that now the front part cannot move 
and third thing which happens is the longitudinal muscles now contract the muscles which are present inside you remember this this muscle longitudinal muscles which are present inside now contract so what happens when the longitudinal muscle contracts the front part of the earthworm becomes short and swollen it becomes short and swollen or you can say short and fat okay that is what happens at front part after this three steps are performed at the front part then what happens the circular muscles at the middle part start contracting same thing if the circular muscles at the middle part contract what will happen again the middle part of the earthworm will become long and thin then bristles will take a grip of it if the bristles take a grip of it then what will happen longitudinal muscles will contract and when longitudinal muscles contract the second part will become short and fatter and same thing repeats at the end part or rear end and this is how earthworm moves okay so that is how earthworm moves three steps first is contraction of the circular muscles bristles taking a grip and then contractions of the longitudinal muscles when circular muscles contract it becomes long when longitudinal muscles contract it becomes short okay ls you can remember ls longitudinal muscles contract and it becomes short okay that is all about movement in other animals if you have any doubt you can click on the sorry you can write in the comment section if you do like my videos please subscribe my channel and click on the like button thank you so much